and up for mitis is a feared complication of intraocular surgery and any cataract surgery which is carried out should be carried out uh, with in mind uh, the aim and requirement to attempt to reduce the risk of endophthalmitis. In the last two decades post-operative endophthalmitis rates have appeared to have risen um, from a paper published by West et al. in ophthalmology in the 90s um, there was a 0.1% rate and in the, uh, in the early 2000s this rose to essentially doubled and rose to 0.2% that is one in every 500 surgeries developed endophthalmitis and this was on a, uh, in the study was based on a USA population and a Medicare population. Now, during that time between the 1990s and 2000, there were changes which occurred in cataract techniques. Uh, scleral tunnels were often replaced by clear corneal incisions, and additionally, there was a move towards the use of topical anesthesia rather than nerve blocks in the form of um, perivulvar or subtenones. And so some studies uh, were uh, found to be able to demonstrate an association uh, between these clear corneal incisions um, and endophthalmitis rates. And uh, Lundstrom et al. in the Ophthalmology Journal 2007 uh, demonstrated uh, this link. However, there are other studies which haven't similarly um, found uh, this link to be apparent. What is well recognised is that most cases of endophthalmitis occur secondary to coagulative staff, uh, which has originated on, from the local ocular surface flora. And the uh, clinical features of endophthalmitis uh, are well known, uh, but are also key uh, in, to, to recognize as key to recognize these early, um, to be able uh, to, uh, to to be able to intervene very quickly. So uh, the, the clinical features were uh, representative of endophthalmitis are pain, redness, principally upper lid edema and loss of vision. And then slit lamp examinations, one will often find a hypopian um, or, and a dense vitritis. And if it's possible to see past the vitritis, uh, one can often see a retinal vasculitis. Uh, again, the key aspect in this is um, to be able to pick up those cases and recognize them as such when um, early enough so that the actual diagnosis unfortunately is more difficult in that um, to differentiate between a post-operative uveitis, uh, non-infectious uveitis and, and end up from mitis. The ocular anatomy has, has certain peculiarities to it which um, make uh, the antibiotic therapy to manage this infection within the eye uh, more difficult and this is really um, uh, aspects such as the inner and outer blood retinal barrier and the blood aqueous humor barrier uh, and these barriers essentially are caused by tight uh, cellular junctions that is cellular junctions uh, between the endothelial cells and uh, between the endothelial cells and the, their basement membrane of retinal capillaries, of retinal parasites, uh, and also in the blood aqueous barrier uh, in around the um, uh, pigmented and non pigmented cerebral body epithelium. So the anatomy, this peculiarity of anatomy, dictates the approach to treatment. Unlike in most other systemic infections where uh, IV or oral antibiotics are the mainstay of treatment. Here, they're not. To, 
to bypass these barriers and ensure you get adequate um, uh, killing of bacteria that is uh, biocidal levels, mycobiocidal levels of, uh, of intraocular antibiotics. One needs to carry out intravitreal injections of antibiotics. Now the difficulty with this or potential um, complication from is that the retinal photoreceptors can also be damaged by toxic levels of antibiotics and also by inflammation uh, associated with the infection, I hope that's host inflammation, um, as well as by direct and infective um, toxicity. So uh, the key to treatment uh, and effective treatment here is early diagnosis and broad spectrum uh, intravitreal injection uh, of uh, intravitreal injection of broad spectrum antibiotics. Now, the t a very common um, uh, antibiotic combination would be vancomycin and giftazidine uh, at uh, concentrations of uh, 1 to 2 milligrams of vancomycin per 0.1 mil and for giftazidine 2.2 milligrams per 0.1 mil. Now, this is as a combination is still extremely effective um, uh, and uh, although the potential use of uh, fourth generation uh, fluoroquinolones is also uh, intravitreally is also a potentially effective alternative treatment. Although uh, the the concentration and toxicity levels still have to be um, confirmed uh, that, that that toxicity is not a problem. Um, the aminoglycoside and mycosin. Uh, use at a concentration of 0.4 milligrams per 0.1 mil. Uh, it has been uh, less used recently due to the demonstration of uh, toxicity against the retinal photoreceptors. Uh, but it's still used in some centres in conjunction with vancomycin. Should or should not steroids uh, be used uh, as part of the mainstay treatment of enophthalmitis? Essentially, uh, the jury is still out as to whether or not it's effective. There are, are a lot of surgeons who practice it, with the uh, uh, reason being to try to ameliorate the host inflammatory response uh, while you still get a sufficient kill uh, of, um, uh, of the, uh, whether without preventing a kill of the um, uh, infecting organism. Um, uh, when or, or when should the tractomy uh, be utilised? Well, the um, endophthalmic vitrectomy study uh, demonstrated that in those cases, very poor vision, uh, that is perception of light um, uh, at the time of diagnosis, that there was an improved outcome if uh, concurrent vitrectomy was carried out in addition to the vitro antibiotics. And in that study, 84% of cases resulted in at least 2100 visual acuity, with 50% achieving uh, an excellent visual acuity of 2040. So, uh, prophylaxis, well, this is probably the single most important aspect of cataract surgery is how can you safely carry out this surgery uh, and but reduce the incidence of endophthalmitis and if possible even eliminate uh, this risk. Well, uh, there's been one large study, um, the largest study ever carried out in relation to management and prophylaxis of endophthalmitis. And this demonstrated a value of intracameral kefiroxin uh, as protective against endophthalmitis. Now, many units around the world have taken up this as their mainstay of a prophylactic treatment. There are others who have said that this study um, uh, had certain flaws related to it and that uh, basically the use of uh, topical um, fourth generation of fluoroquinolones was still uh, extremely effective and uh, against endophthalmitis and, uh, and or even subconsumptible 
kind of be oh, it's not post operative basis. Um, there are th those groups, however, who would recommend using a dual effect, a dual treatment, dual prophylactic um, treatment, that is, use of intracamel kefiroxine and additionally post operative um, use of high. Uh, uh, or high um, um, uh, frequency uh, topical uh, moxifloxacin or some of the other uh, fourth generation of Um Some studies have demonstrated that in the normal non-inflamed eye uh, that topical administration of moxifloxacin and gadafloxacin didn't achieve um, a sufficiently high concentration of intravitreal uh, of these antibiotics uh, to uh, result in a, a definite kill, um, microbiocidal kill of for common anophilized pathogens. And this was a bit with Costello uh, 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 published in 2006.